Good morning, pre-calculus students and those that are finishing up South Texas College. We're almost done. Still chapter eight. A lot of stuff we did. Good morning, pre-calculus students. We are almost done with this bad boy chapter eight. And this is good news for all you South Texas College students, which means your course is about over. We'll try to get as much of this chapter in as we can before uh, the end of the course. Let's move on. I forgot to mention, we're doing lesson five. More than halfway through the, the chapter, we are going to look at the trigonometric form. Another name, they call it polar. But it, it's not going to look like the polar lesson that we'll have later. But it still has to do with trig and angles and, and uh, what we called vectors, you know. But... What we're doing is going to represent a complex number, if you recall, A plus BI. We're going to re represent that as a trig, a set of trig functions. That ought to be very fun for you, okay? It's quite a lot of stuff we did. And uh, let's call it a day, if you will. Bye. Here is your first graph of a complex number. First thing you need to realize is that complex are not a real number. They're, they have a real component. That's this A part. But remember... They have a complex part with the I in there. So when we graph a complex number, we still look like X and Y, but it's really not. The X is actually your, your real component. This is where we put the real number. If it's a 4, then we go over to a 4, and we count 4. If it's a negative 4, we count 1, 2, 3, 4. The B is this axis here, and that represents our imaginary part, and they're always in I's. So if we say negative 4 plus 2I, that meant I went 2I up, 2. And here's my negative 4, here's my 2, That the dot looks like there, so our vector goes from the origin to there. There's my complex number right here, a plus 2i, which is, I'm sorry, uh, a plus bi, which is, in this case, negative 4 plus 2i. Now, this particular vector, look at it. goes all the way to 2 is your real part. And the imaginary part is 3, negative 3, down 3. So it's A plus BI. A is 2, B is a negative 3. That's how you graph that vector. A couple other kind of vectors really fast. Let's see. If I want to graph uh, the number 4. Well, 4 is the real part. There's 0i. So 4 means 4 to the right. Do not go and mark a point up or down. So this vector starts here and goes all the way to 4 plus 0i. You can do the same thing if I say my number is uh, negative 2i. Well, the 
this is my B, my A must be zero. So I do not go left or right, but I go down two, one, two, and so I move my vector down there. And that, that would just represent a negative 2i. This just represented a positive 4, this one here. This one represented a combination. This one represented 2 minus 3i. When we add two complex numbers, you've done this before, how we added the real part, then we added the imaginary parts. Lo and behold, if you graph those individual complex numbers, 4 plus 1i, 4 plus 1i goes out to here. 4, 1i. And then you graph 1 plus 3i, 1, 3i, that goes here. So here are your individual components. And it should not surprise you that if you use that parallelogram principle that we had before, and we make a parallel line, top and bottom are parallel, and the two sides are parallel, that this vector here, it ends up at the sum of those two vectors, just like we did before. But it's it actually is actually the name of that complex number. 4 plus 1 is 5, 3i plus 1i is 4i. This is where you're at. Just take a look at it. 5, let me draw it here, 5 and 4. 5 plus 4i. That's where the vector is. It's the resultant of these two vectors. Now, that's not the length. That's just where it ended up. The length is a whole nother ball game, remember? how we had to find the length up to here, and we'll get to that in a, in, a, in a minute here. First problem, find the sum of six, mi six minus two i and neg negative four minus three i. Well, simply, that's 10, or is it? No, it's not, it's two. Minus two, minus three, minus five i. So. It should not surprise you, without me doing any extra work, that if I go 2 to the right and then 5 down, we should see the resultant here. Well, let's see. Let's try it. 6 minus 2i. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2. That vector. Well, why is it not changing color on me? That vector is my 6 minus 2i. Negative 4 minus 2i. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. That one goes, let me make sure I, 1, 2, try to make it as accurate as I can. There's my negative 4 minus 3i. And using that rule about parallel, parallel to this, there you go, parallel to this, there you go, there's the resultant vector where it ended up at. 2 minus 5i. So it works. Graphically, and it works algebraically. There's their solution. Makes perfect sense to me now. Some relationships between x and y, which is our rectangular, our rectangular version of a graph, and r and theta. This is what's related to our, our polar. When you, we get to polar, we use these same formulas. x is always equal to r cosine theta y is always equal to r sine of theta. Should not be a surprise, because look at here's your complex number going out to here. And here's your r. 
and here's my x value, here's my y value. So just think of it as a right triangle for a minute. Just think of this as a right triangle. Here's theta. So x is adjacent over, let's see, I'm sorry, why am I writing that? I didn't mean to say x, I meant to say cosine of x is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is, why am I the cosine of x? Hello again. Cosine of theta. Oh my gosh. I should go back to bed. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over r. Solve it for x. x equals r cosine of theta. Likewise, sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it's y over r. Solve it for y. y equals r sine of theta. So we've done that before, but these will really mean something later. It's important to know this, this uh, conversion. Now, obviously, it's a right triangle. So if I want to find how long r is, and I was just hinting to that earlier, how long r is, Pythagorean theorem says x squared plus y squared must be equal to r squared. Take the square root. r must be the square root. It's positive, x squared plus y squared. That's where that came from. When you're looking at the angle and you have x and y, then the tangent of that angle is y over x. There's that. Okay, so it's all related, but it's also connected to something called polar, and we'll use it for in, in the polar section. Plus, this is actually a subset of polar. Trigonometric, well, he's calling that to be like a polar form. I call it trigonometric form because you don't really know what polar is just yet. So we'll just say the trigonometric form of a complex number of x, there's my a and there's my b, there's my i, a plus or minus bi. To write this in trigonometric form, you have both of these components in there. And I know you're thinking, well, where, who made this up? You have r on the outside, parenthesis, cosine of the angle, plus i, sine of the angle. Where is that coming from? Well, just think of my complex number. Okay, so I'm going to go make a certain angle here. Call this theta. And this distance here, I used to call it y, but it's no longer y. This is my, my, my b. And this is my, my A. So, yes, this is still called R. Well, if I go back to X and Y, if you recall the lettering, if I go back to call that to X, I call that Y, and X equals R cosine of cosine uh, x equals to r cosine of theta and substitute instead of x it was a a equals r cosine theta and if I said y was equal to r sine of theta on the previous page and substitute y and I put the b instead b equals r sine of theta, then my a plus bi would really be a is r cosine theta plus my b was r sine of theta. You see what I'm saying here? a plus b. And don't forget, that's A. Oh, 
A plus B I. That's what that is. Well, both of those have an R, so I factor the R out. And what do I have left? Cosine of theta plus sine of theta with my little tiny i. There it is. Sine theta. There's my little tiny i. He just puts the i on the other side. It's the same thing. It's where this came from. So you're better off just, you know, now that we've derived it and showed where this comes from, this is a trigonometric form of this A plus BI. There's a shortcut for this because people get lazy. They don't want to write all that out. So they write, they write uh, cis of theta for the inside part. Cosine theta plus I sine theta. They write this just as cis of theta. Well, that doesn't take account for the R. So R cis theta means R cosine theta plus I sine of theta. Okay. The R... I got to give you this vocabulary because it came up in my math lab. It is called the absolute value, or another fancy name is modulus. The theta, well, I say modulus, if you of x and y, we'll see how we use that in a minute. We'll use it with the Pythagorean theorem again. But theta is called an argument of x plus y i and the absolute value or modulus of x plus y i. Let's use it. Express 2 cosine of 300 degrees plus i sine of 300 degrees. So let's take a look first at what it looks like. 300 goes all the way around right? That's 300. Which means this, my reference angle must be 60. Okay, now, this is stopping at a certain place. And let's see, what else can I do to make it easy for you? Just picture that right there for a minute. This stands for 2 cis of 300. That's its shortcut abbreviation. Regardless, he wants it in rectangular. Rectangular means X's and Y's. Well, look at the problem. We know. I could just work. I could distribute this for a minute and say 2 cosine of 300 plus 2 sine of 300. And I can work those numbers out for a second because I want to find out what A is and what B is. That's B. So let me, if I do this here, my I, I'll put it over here. That way you can see it, that it was in the front, now it's in the back. Just to help me out. Cosine of 300, well, I'm going to use the 60 degree angle as my reference. 60, and if that's 60, this is 90, this must be 30, so this must be a 1, this must be a 2, this must be a, I don't even know why I put it in the XY plane, That I'm probably going to confuse you, so let me erase at least the, uh, the X and Y plane, because it really was just a, a free floater triangle. Okay, 60, 30. 1, 2, square root of 3. And the cosine of theta must be my uh, 1 over 2. And my sine of theta must be square root of 3 over 2. 
I'm in quadrant four. Cosine is positive, but sine is negative. So I need to realize that the sine is negative, so this actually has to have a negative attached to it to be in quadrant four. Let's go back down here. Two. Cosine of theta was a half, plus two. Sine of theta was a negative square root of three over two. There's my i. That's a one, plus, well, actually it's one, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a minus in there, so why don't I just write that out? Minus the square root of three, i. There's my A and there's my B. So we used our rectangular form. We wrote it in one minus square root of three. Let's go to the next answer. Let's see. He used the same formulas that I used. He kept the two factored out, but then he multiplied it in. He got the same answer. And go ahead. Look at this. You can actually key that in the calculator exactly as you see it with the letter I. I is probably uh, by your equal sign or your period, something like that. Little tiny I. And he gave the exact same answer. Look at it. It even gives the answer I. Interesting. And the square root of, of a negative 3 was this. So that's what the calculator gave you. Converting from polar rectangular to trigonometric. So you sketch the graph of x plus yi like I did before, find R by doing, remember this is how we find the, 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 it's called the modulus. It's called the absolute value. And the reason it's absolute value, when you square root something, you only have positive answer. So when I have my X and my Y and I'm out here, there's my Y now, this does stand, this Y does stand for my imaginary part. The X stands for my real part. Remember, this is my real. This is my imaginary. That R, the modulus, would be the absolute value. In other words, it's not really absolute value like you think of. It's just a fancy way for saying the the square root of x squared plus the y squared, and the y squared was the imaginary, the, the number part in front of the i. Then we want to talk about the angle. We have an angle in there, and the tangent of theta will always be y over x. And paying attention to which quadrant you're in. Okay. That's, I guess he thinks that's important. I suppose people do forget to pay attention to what quadrant you're in. Like, for instance, remember the last problem I did? Um, um, I, I knew my reference angle was 60, but the angle, the true angle, theta, was 300. I had to remember that I was in the fourth quadrant. Or else I end up forgetting those things. Okay, here's an imaginary number. Now, this is, believe it or not, this is in rectangular form. This is rectangular. Because you can, you realize this is my A, and my B must be a 1. And I can graph that in a rectangular picture. I can go left square root of 3, which is, here's 1, here's 2, it's less than, it's less than 2. So it's somewhere in here. And then up 1, somewhere here. I know I'm over here. So this is why it's called rectangular, because I can go A and I can go B, and I'm in a rectangular plane, even though this axis is the imaginary axis, it's still rectangular. 
Okay, so write this in trigonometric form. When he means in trigonometric form, he means this. R cosine theta plus I sine of theta, or R cis of theta. That's what he means. So first of all, we do a graph. Da-da, I just did. This value is the negative square root of 3. This value is a 1. You have to do the graph because I, I need to see the triangle. And where am I at? I'm in quadrant 2. Remember in quadrant 2, cosine of theta will be negative, And sine of theta will be positive. Keep that in mind. So I need to find x equals r cosine of theta, y equals r sine of theta, and then the tangent of theta is y over x. So those are important things to know. I need, I need R cosine. I need R sine. Those are the components of these two pieces here. So I go back up to my picture and realize that, that uh, square root of 3, negative square root of 3 is my X, equals to... Uh, Cosine of theta. Well, I don't know what r is. I'm going to do r. r will equal to the negative square root of 3 squared plus the 1 squared, which is 3 plus 1. r squared is this. So r squared, r is equal to 2. So the distance, that's 2. So I got my r. Negative square root of 3 equals to 2. Now I still need my theta. Well, tangent of theta equals to my y over x. My y is a 1. My x is a negative square root of 3. And I have to ask myself, what triangle has 1 and a square root of 3? Oh, I remember that. That's a 1 2 square root of 3. And the opposite, the 1, is a 30 degree angle. And I'm sitting in what quadrant? There it is. This is a 30. And I don't know if he's in radians or I don't know if he's in... Uh, uh, degrees, I don't know. I'll do degrees right now, and then I'll switch it over if he needs it in radians. So I got my cosine of, now cosine is negative here. So even though I'm doing a 30 degrees, it really wasn't 30. It's 30 from 180. That's, that's 150 degrees. So you don't want to put a 30 here, even though I'm using 30 down here. It's really the angle is 150 degrees. Now my, I'm all set here. Look at y. Well, y, so why am I writing y for? I already know what y is. y was a 1 equals to my r is the same, sine of 150 degrees. So I'm ready to write this out. Negative square root of 3 plus 1i is equal to a 2 times cosine of 150 degrees plus I sine of 150 degrees. Now, just in case he wanted in radians, because he didn't say in the beginning of the problem, 
if this is 30, this is the same thing as a pi over 6. And take 1 pi over 6 from 6 pi over 6, that angle is really a 5 pi over 6. So that is also 2 times cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine of 5 pi over 6. Now we can finish it up though, because, well, we already did it in, uh, does he want it in cis form? That's what I thought he wanted it in. It'd be kind of silly to work it out. I think if I work it out, it would come back to the same problem I had. The only thing I, I could, I could abbreviate it to cis, the angles are the same, 5 pi over 6. That's going to be my story I'll stick with. That is in trigonometric form. Let's see what the author did. Same picture. Yeah, I like it. Uh, he got this. Well, he, well, he just wrote him out. Let's see. Am I going to be right? Well, he's solving for R. Got R's too. Got that. That's good news. Then he got, uh, I, I had one over, I had one over negative square root of three, but remember he didn't leave the radical. So his work was he multiplied both sides by a negative square root of three over a negative square root of three. And that gives me a, a three down here and a square root of three, negative square root of three up here. doesn't matter. Negative square root of 3 over 3. Same answer. And that's fine. Uh, he got his angle to be a pi over 6 as a reference. So did I. But we knew we were in quadrant 2. So 5 pi over 6 was the angle. So this complex number in rectangular form became this in trigonometric form. This is the abbreviation. Ah, oh, pat yourself on the back if you follow along. Guys, you're in, you're in dark waters. There's a lot of sharks out here. We haven't done this kind of stuff ever. It's kind of cool, though. I don't think I've touched this stuff in uh, probably uh, 10 years. Hmm. Um, converting from rectangular form to trigonometric form. Well, we just did one. He's making us do another one. Um, negative 3i. That means 0. Not, well, I could say plus negative, but I go 0 minus 3i. So what's the graph look like? 0 left and right, but down 1, 2, 3. And so my complex number is graphed to here. So the tricky thing is, guys, is if, if I talk about my, my x being 0 and my y being a negative 3, my tangent of theta would have to be y over x. Well, you can't do this. So how am I going to get my angle? Oh, well, let's use some common sense here. Start from here. Go around. What's that angle? That's a 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2, if you keep it in, in radians. So we already have, we already know my angle. My theta is 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2 in radians, if we choose to do it that way. Uh, what else am I missing? Uh, oh, I need the sine. What is sine? of 270 degrees. Unit circle says that was equal to a negative one. What's the cosine of 270 degrees? The x value is a zero. So my r is that distance by itself. Think about it. It's really easy to do. Really easy to take the modulus 
r is the square root of 0 squared plus a negative 3 squared. And that would be r squared, I'm sorry. Well, no, I didn't. It is r is the square root of this. I think I messed up on the other problem. I may have put square and that. Once I square root it, r is the square root of a negative 3 squared, which is, uh, believe it or not, just uh, 3. Well, count it. 1, 2, 3. There's your r. So negative 3i is equal to, in trigonometric form, my r is a 3 times cosine of... 270 degrees plus sine of 270 degrees. And we already did the answer. That would turn into 3 times a 0 plus sine of 2 is a negative 1. Final answer, negative 3. I mean, it does. It simplifies all the way out. All the trig disappears. But if you want to leave it in the trig form to, to make sure that we see trig, you can just leave it as, uh, you can leave it as the original answer, 3 cis of 270 degrees will be a negative 3i. Um, there it is. Drew it to 70 degrees. There that is. There this is. There is this is. Oh, wonderful. Love it when a plan goes together. Example four. Write each complex in its alternative form using calculator. Okay. I know it's calculator because I don't know. Let's see, 125? Maybe I don't need a calculator. Let's see what happens. What's that look like, 125 degree angle? 90, 125. How much is left to get to 80, 180? 55. Nope. I don't know that answer in my head. So it's a calculator problem. And cosine will be negative and sine will be positive. So alternative form means this. 6 cis of 125 degrees. Okay, pause it. Go to your calculator. And, and Well, I don't know if he wants us to do any more. He wants a calculator approximation, so let's go ahead and, and do it. Negative 0.53756 plus what times I? Go back to my calculator. Point eight up. Oh, eight one nine one. Okay. Um, Make sure you're in degrees, because he wrote degrees. So if you don't do the degrees, you'll get it wrong. And that's what I'm sticking with. I went to four decimals. Four is more than enough. I wouldn't do less. Ah, he did a whole bunch. Did I have that for 91? What happened? Did I... 3... Oh, he distributed the 6. Okay, I didn't do that. I got scared. I saw these numbers. I said, those aren't my numbers. I'll take his word for it. Uh, oops. Example 4. Let's not... Let's just not cheat. I'm covering it up. 5 minus 4i, alternative form, the graph, 
one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Since it's negative, I'm going down. Goes out to here. There's my complex number. And let's see if I draw those. There's my five. There's my four. And uh, I can find R. R will be the square root of 25 plus 16. Square it, square it. That is the square root of 20, 30, 41. I can... That's a calculator problem because uh, this is equal to square root of 41. Cis of that angle, which is going to be from a calculator, most likely, okay? So, I need to find out that if the tangent of theta equals to four-fifths, which is 0 0.8, theta will be okay, a posit. Well, I guess you're just going to cheat and look at the paper, but uh, posit and go to the calculator. And the only thing I didn't mark on there, it's a negative four. So it's, that angle is approximately a negative 39 degrees. It has some decimals, but I just got lazy. So I would write cis of... Well, I don't want to do cis on this case. Well, I can cis of negative 39 degrees. Um, don't forget what quadrant we're in. That's negative 39. I got to count all the way around. I don't want to, that means I'm going to get a positive answer now. What is 360 minus roughly 39? That's uh, 321, 321 degrees. So that, that would be the correct answer I put up here. Because we don't do the negative angle in uh, treatment form, 321. 321 degrees. Mm, it goes to 3, 4 if you use the whole thing. Wonderful. Application of complex numbers is these, go to the internet, you can search for uh, complex, call them, mand uh, you can call them Julian or Mandelbrot. And they are a form called fractals. There's a Julia series, there's a Mandelbrot series. And each of these dots that are in the picture, they actually go forever. They repeat this picture, this big picture. Every nodule you'll see repeats. So if you zoom in on here, this is the same thing we just saw. If you zoom in on here, it's a duplicate of what you just saw. It just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. And there is going to be a maximum, if I was to put a, like a maximum distance here, that every point has to be within that, that distance. And obviously, as I get smaller, that's the biggest it'll always be. This is going to be a smaller radius. This is even smaller. Well, there's a pattern to this. Consider Z to be a complex number. Like Z could be 2 plus 3i possibly. And so look at the pattern here. He starts out with his complex number. He takes one away from it. Then he takes a whole number and he squares it. There it is. He takes one away from it. That's the second term. The next term takes this whole answer, squares it, takes one away. And you can guess what the next term will be. It's this whole answer, which would be uh, 
z squared minus 1 squared minus 1 squared minus 1 squared minus 1. One more. <laughs> so you keep on going and going and going and going and going. And he says, if the absolute values, remember what those were? Those were the R values. Those were the square root of x squared plus y squared. Of any of the resulting complex numbers exceeds 2. This is for the Julia set. Then the complex Z is not in the solution set. Not in the Julia set. That means it wouldn't have been one of the points that's in here at, at all. Otherwise, Z is part of the set. And the point A plus a comma b should be shaded in the graph okay a lot of gobbledygook you need a whole course in this it's very very complex get it complex determine whether this number this z belongs in this solution set of julia well what we do is we we start out and look at the uh r's well r in this case would be the square root of 0 squared plus 0 squared, which is 0. Well, that's not more than 2. That's fine. So then we do another one. We take that 0, it's just a 0, and we subtract, we square it, and we subtract 1. So the first answer was a 0. So we take the answer, we square it, and take one away. That still gives me a negative 1. So we take that answer, and we square it. And we take one away, and we get 1 minus 0. Oh, no, sorry, 1 minus 1, 0 again. So we started out with 0. Now we got a negative 1. Now we got a 0 again. Now I take that answer and I square it and I take one away from it. I'm back to a negative one again. So there's the pattern. It'll always be zero, negative one, zero, negative one, zero, negative one. So none of the numbers will ever be uh, greater than two. So it is in the Julia set. This, this, uh, imagine this complex number is in the Julia set. So we would graph it and plot the A comma B. Uh, there's his nice and beautiful steps. Okay, example five. Okay, got the answer there again, so let's ignore it. We're starting out with Z equals to one plus one I. So we start out with that. So now I'm gonna take that 1 plus 1i, one and I'm going to square it, take away 1. What does that give me? Uh, 1 plus 1i one is 1 squared, first times first, and then outer times inner, 1i, 1 times 1i one is 1i, plus 1 times 1i is 2i, plus 2i, plus i times i, which is i squared, which is minus 1. All of that, subtract this minus 1. That turns into 1 squared, that's 1 minus 1 is 0. And 2i, that's 2i minus 1. So now I have to take 2i minus 1 and square it and take away 1. What do I get? Now... As long as r is always less than 2, let's see what happens here. Uh, r would be the square root of 4, four plus 1, that's the square root of 5. That's greater than 2. So I think we're done. It's not. Let's see. I don't have to do more work. Let's see. Uh, that there, what, negative 1 plus 2i, is that what I had? Negative 1 plus 2i. Negative 1 plus 2i. Yeah, there it is. And it's too big. Okay, the absolute is too big. So it's not in the set. You, you, you keep on going, and if, there, if the R's are always, the original R was fine. The original R was 
the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. That's square root of 2. That's less than 2. So we were good. That was fine. Then I did it. The, the, the original one was fine. Then I did the next one, and that was too, too big, too big. So I'm done. Product theorem. There's only two things left, guys. Product theorem. If you have a cis a number and another cis number, and you want to multiply those two complex numbers in trigonometric form, there's a shortcut. Obviously, you have to multiply the two constants in the front. Then the secret is you will be adding the two angles together and making a new cis. And so it makes a little more sense if you write them both in cis numbers. Because then you know you're going to multiply those two. Then you're going to add the angles and do a single cis. So here we're taking, I'm going to write them in cis form because it looks easier. 3 cis only works when those two angles are the same. Cis 45 times 2 cis of 135. Now you got to be careful because you are in quadrant 2 on this one, and this one you are in quadrant 1. So pay attention. Yes, it's only a 45 degree angle. 1, 1, square root of 2. That's fine. This 35, 135, is a multiple of 45. It's 3 of the 45s. So again, this is a 45 degree angle in here, but you're all the way in this quadrant. So when I say 1 and 1, it's actually a negative 1, and that's a square root of 2. As long as you keep that in mind, you're all set. So here, the answer is going to be 3 times 2. Maybe it didn't even matter because I'm going to add those angles together and see what happens. Uh, 3 times 2. Why did, I, why did I write 3 times 2? Cis of the sum of those angles. So... That what is a 45 plus 135. What does that add up to? Well, that's silly. That's 180. I don't even need these two pictures because they added up to 180 to this quadrant here. They're on the line. So write the result rectangular. He wants it in A plus B I. Okay, so that would be 3.2. Times uh, the cosine of 180 degrees plus the sine of 180 degrees with my letter I in front. So that's three point three times two is six. Cosine of 180 is a negative one. Sine of 180 is zero. 0i, so in rectangular form, I can leave it like that, but it makes no sense. There's no i. Negative 6 should be the answer. At least I hope. We can go look. Uh, da, 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 yep. Yep. Okay, how about dividing? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just as easy as multiplying. If you've got two polar forms or two trigonometric forms of a complex number and you want to divide them, now obviously the bottom cannot be zero, duh. We take the two coefficients and just like you see here, you divide them. But when we the angles we subtract because it's a division problem. So I can rewrite that as 
R1 over R2 cis of their subtraction. So I can go theta 1 minus theta 2. There it is right here. Okay. So we know for a fact we got 10 over 5. That's a 2. Cis of negative 60 plus 150. That's 2 cis of a 90. So that means 2 times the cosine of 90 plus my i times the sine of 90. Cosine of 90 is 1, so that's 1 plus sine of 90. I'm sorry, cosine of 90 is 0. Sine of 90 is 1, so that's 1i. Leaving 2i as my answer. Now that's the story I'm sticking with. Let's see. I wish you'd done something different, but man, I hate it when I make mistakes. <laughs> Why am I adding? I know you're yelling at me, stop, stop, stop. I messed up. It will subtract them. So it's not negative. It wasn't 90. It was negative, I mean, uh, uh, negative 210. No, 2. Yes, 210. So let me, f let me erase the evidence. You know, only four of you watch my videos anyway, so. It'll be our secret. You won't tell nobody. Will you? Don't tell nobody that I forgot to subtract. <laughs> ah, and I know better than that. Negative 60 minus 150 minus 150, negative 210. Negative 210 means I'm going this way. And so 2 cosine of a negative 210 degrees plus I sine of a negative 210 degrees. And just pay attention. I'm over here. So sine is positive. Cosine will be negative. And the the Reference angle I have to use is that angle right here. This angle here. So if this was a negative 210, I'm really thinking about uh, going from this way. Think about what we're talking about. Anyway, my, my reference angle from 180 to 210 is the 30 degrees. That's a 30 degree angle. All I care about is though that my cosine will be negative, my sine will be positive. So one, two, square root of three, there's where the negative comes from for your cosine. Two, I don't wanna write cosine of negative 210. Two times the cosine of that negative 210 will be a negative square root of 3 over 2 plus my i. The sine would be a 1 half. Each of those are multiplied by a 2, so negative square root of 3 plus an i. Should be the answer. Should be the same thing as that division problem. That the same problem I just did? Oh, I forgot to subtract. Oh. Yep, it's all there. And that is it. That is it.
So I hope you enjoyed this and some level it was different. I can honestly say it was different. And I'll also tell you something else. You are probably the first students at Med High to have had this lesson taught to you probably in, I'm going to gather, 15 years probably. Yes, I would say 15 years. So I hope you feel proud of yourself. 